What's up y'all? I'm out here on the range as you can see on this hot steamy day. Sun's kind of staying behind the clouds a little bit but it's peeking out every now and then and steaming up this old water from the rain we've just had lately so it is sure enough swampy out here. I did get an early start on it today so that's helped out a little bit so hopefully I can make it out of here before it gets too hot. I've got a couple more things on the agenda and this one right here should be another really interesting nine mil. So we got the jelly contraption set up of course with a couple of chronos and two blocks of gel here. Now I've done one test so far so we got some tracks in this far block i'll leave a link above if y'all hadn't seen that well we got a completely clear front block here and this front half is all clear so should have plenty of room to get this one done sticking with that heavy clothing barrier of course with the layer of denim fleece and two layers of cotton t-shirt and for this one here i've got something a little bit more unusual than what i usually test in nine this was actually sent to me by mike so a big big appreciation to him for that we've got some magtech nine mil here but this is actually some soft point we got some jacket of soft point flat nose there this is 95 grain you can see the cartridge there brass case with that flat exposed lead nose on it now i did look up the ballistics on this on their site and they're saying 1345 feet per second out of a four inch test barrel so that's pretty spicy and it's going to have to be because you know there's no cavity on this right here so you're basically relying completely on the velocity and the compound of this lead hopefully it's soft enough at whatever velocity we do see to get this stuff to mushroom out for us now with them claiming a four inch test barrel we should see that i hear out of the g17 y'all know it's got the four and a half inch barrel and then we've got one that's a little bit shorter of course with the canic med a mc9 with a 3.1 inch barrel so i'm actually very curious to see what happens with these right here i don't think i've tested a jacketed soft point nine mil i may have but i can't remember right off the top of my head hopefully this stuff is moving quick enough and has got a soft enough lead compound to give us some nice performance in the gel well let's get it all set up and see what happens all right let's see what this stuff's running y'all and we'll do a five round average as usual from each barrel length starting with this mc9 first now if you're not familiar with this lab radar like i always explain you're gonna get multiple velocity readings the large numbers at the muzzle and then you've got five across the bottom the first one i've got set for three yards here which is roughly where the gel is going to be at 10 feet and then you've got 10 15 25 and 50 yards so now remember this is saying 1345 from a four inch barrel so from a three inch i expect we'll probably see being a light projectile uh, 1250 ish 1260 ish maybe let's see what happens here Woo! that's some loud stuff i can tell you that right now 1273 yeah, this stuff is loud y'all 1258 holy moly 1253 1247 and 1262 this is some very loud stuff right here let's check out the average all right we got some pretty good numbers considering it's just a three inch barrel our uh, average was 1259 feet per second extreme spread was 26 and a standard deviation of 10.0 so not bad at all it's just a 95 grain projectile but it is just standard pressure so not too bad it was very very loud though and it's not just because of this thing right here i've done other ones today i know it may create a little bit of echo but with this ear pro that has nothing to do with it that stuff is just loud but let's get it reset and see if the g17 can hit those numbers all right let's see what this four and a half inch does y'all now i'm expecting to see the 1345 out of this because they were saying a four inch barrel so i feel pretty confident we'll hit it out of this right here 1390 13.66 13.44 13.65 and 1348 so seemed like we dipped a little bit on a couple of them but average should be well over what it's supposed to be let's check it out all right sure enough that one got it up to speed for us we had a five round average that time of 1363 feet per second 46 extreme spread and a standard deviation of 18.3 so we're looking for 1345 and got 1363 makes total sense because we had an extra half inch of barrel so hopefully again i'm hoping that's some nice soft lead compound because you got 1363 there and if you remember on the mc9 it was 1259 so you're talking about what 104 feet per second difference so that's a pretty significant difference if you ask me that may be the difference in this stuff performing or not performing but again hopefully this lead compound is soft enough and that's enough velocity to get it to work out of both of them but let's get this stuff reset y'all know what time it is 
All right, y'all, it's cavity-free jelly time. We'll put one of each into the block, starting with this MC9 first. I gotta admit, I'm a little bit skeptical on this one as far as if we're gonna see good performance or not, but hopefully we will. All right, that should have been a good one right there. Ah, I think it might have popped out the top. Let me go check it out. All right, y'all, sure enough, it curved out the top on me down there, and I don't think it got any kind of expansion just looking at that disruption down there, but I want to try to catch one anyway, so let's see if I can get this one down a little bit lower, and hopefully it won't curve. If it's not expanding, though, it's just kind of, it's just going to do what it wants to do. All right, I think I seen the towel move down there. Let me go check it out. All right, y'all, sure enough, that was a full pull down there all the way through both blocks and caught the projectile in the towel. So I don't have much hope for this right here after seeing that because that chrono was reading over 13 on that one. So I don't think, I think this is going to do basically more of the same. Yeah, I saw the towel. So let me go down there and check out what we got. All right, that actually was not a full pull right there. You can probably see it in the camera view, but it didn't mushroom like it was supposed to. It uh, had jacket separation. So I'm guessing that we're right at the velocity threshold to try to get these to do something. And unfortunately the chrono didn't read that one right there. So I don't know what that threshold is. So I'm gonna try to put another round here. It might get a little messy, but I feel like this is some info I, I wanna know. I mean, I saw a lot of cloth right there. Let me go see what happened. Well, that one was way too far left. I was afraid things were about to get messy. Let's try this one more time here. I didn't get a velocity reading on that one either. It might've been outside the beam on that one. All right, that should have been a nice clean one right there. Still ain't getting velocity readings for whatever. Let me go check it out. All right, let's check out what we got down here, y'all. It definitely got a little bit messy and I still didn't get this other chrono to read, but we've got the average off that other one. So not really a big deal there. Basically what you got here is pretty much failure from both of these, in my opinion. The MC9, absolute complete failure. That's the first one of that one was on the top here. You can see it comes in here, minimal disruption because you didn't have any kind of expansion. Goes in here and then comes out the top right there. Then the second one from the MC9 was the one right up under it. And that one, again, minimal disruption. Now it's got some disruption because of the projectile going through the gel here, but goes all the way through, all the way through the second block and all the way out the end of that uh, second block. And I'll show you the projectile, absolutely no expansion at all. And then the ones from the G17 actually did something, but not what they were supposed to do. Now this in the front here, that came out the side right here. It went in clean and came out the side just because these things are, are kind of staying solid for a while. So they're just going wherever they feel like going. Now behind it is the two that I kept. I'll show you some different angles, but just when I tell you they all look the same, they all look the same. All of these tracks look just the same. But anyway, the G17 ones, they go about right here and then you get jacket separation. You got some jacket there, pieces of jacket. The bulk of the jacket from this one is here. And then the projectile keeps on going to right there. And then the bulk of the jacket off of this one is in in this area and the projectile keeps going again to right there almost the same distance so what that's telling me right there from just looking at this without before pulling them is that lead compound is too hard because with this jacket separation you've got velocity to get it to do something but it just didn't do what it was supposed to do so as far as the penetration on these again the mc9 it's all the way out the end 32 inches i would assume the other one probably would have too it came out right here and kept on flying so 
Uh, the ones from the G17, you lost the jacket right around the 15, 16 inches mark, and then the projectiles kept going the lead part. This one is at 23 and a half, and this one here is at 24 and a quarter. So pretty much the same performance from both of these. I mean, these would do some kind of job that you needed them to do if you put them in the right place, but that is absolutely not what you expect those to do. And then here's your close-up look at them. As I said on the top there, both of those are MC9. One of them went out and then the other one kept on trucking all the way through here. You can see it turns into a little bitty straight line and there you can see going right out the end. And then the ones from the G17, again, those are on the bottom. That first one you're seeing in the foreground, that one went out the side as you can see, but the other two behind it lined up next to each other. That's the ones we'll follow. You can see, start losing the jacket right there, bunch of jacket, and there's all of the jacket from both of them. And then you keep on trucking with the lead and there you see it. From above, again, a little bit crowded, but you can see as I kind of give you different angles, all of these look the same. There's absolutely no expansion from any of these. And I'll show you the one from the MC9 here in a second but nothing from any of them. And then there's the lead from the G17. All right, y'all, let's check out these projectiles. Pretty interesting looking stuff down here. Obviously, this is the one from the MC9 that went all 32 inches. As you can see, it did push the lead back in there just a little bit, that cloth and all, but no expansion. You can see there, it didn't open up the scives even, nothing went on there. So nothing from that one. And then the G17, you definitely got something from these here. You can see there, they started to do what they're supposed to do, but they just didn't have it in them. I think this lead is just too hard. I think this lead compound is just too hard because the velocity is there. I mean, it shed the jacket right off of here like it was nothing. And even that, when it pushed, it was enough to push that lead down in there. But I really do think this lead is just too hard at these velocities to get this stuff to open up or mushroom like it's supposed to. But let's get a little info on them anyway. I'm sure this one here didn't lose anything. They both started at 95. This one is at 95.6. So obviously nothing lost there these i'm kind of curious about again they started at 94 that one is from is at 74.0 and then this one here both of them from the g17 again 74.0 so you got a 74 uh, grain chunk of lead inside that projectile and then as far as the sizes on them nothing really exciting at all but i'll get you a few measurements here the base on this is 350 with a length of 458 and then these little lead chunks here you got 342 with a length of 353 and then 320 with a length of 403. So there you go, y'all, the Magtech 95 grain jacketed soft point nine mil. This definitely ain't the stuff for me. I think this is gonna be relegated to carbine testing for sure. This is probably gonna do a pretty good job out of the carbine. With this lead being as hard as it looks to be, I think it's just gonna take more velocity now. With that being said, of course, when you start pushing it faster, it's gonna have that jacket come apart even sooner and even more, which maybe not as big of a deal with this if that lead stays together like it probably will so very disappointed to see the performance right here out of a short barrel i was hoping they would do pretty well to give you another uh, non-hp option for if you had to have one for whatever reason but definitely looking forward to seeing if we can make them do something through the carbine all right y'all i think i'm gonna call it right there for what was a pretty disappointing soft point test again i really was hoping to see these things perform well just for folks who can't use an hp for whatever reason or, or just prefer soft point for whatever reason i think just a total game guess that this lead compound is just too hard like i mentioned already the velocity is way on up there with these things and this is 95 grain i mean there ain't much hope of anything much lighter than this so 95 grain if you can't get these things to mushroom out at that velocity it's got to be a lead compound problem in my opinion but let me know down in the comments what y'all think about these things do any of y'all out there actually run these soft points do you run some other kind of soft point if you do and you've seen good performance out of them what kind of barrel length are you running it out of let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are if you did enjoy the video make sure you take a second reach down and hit that thumbs up button make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you get notified when i upload stuff once again a big thanks to all my range gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel i've got some really good stuff headed your way so make sure you stay on the lookout and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon